Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Speedway Signature. Matt checking in, and at the end of day two, currently your number one seed here. It's Boogie Woogie 99904B, and holy cow, this robot is the fastest I have seen here in this game so far. Lots of great stuff we'll be talking about Boogie Woogie. They already have an event win under your belt, and they were division finals last year. Also currently number one at skills here at this event too. But just look at this gorgeous robot so far. It is so quick on the field. We'll be talking about some of their reasoning and why they're going uh, different routes with their robot as well too. Uh, they got a PTO that they're running, so excited to learn more about why they went that direction. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Ben, let's talk about this PTO mech that you're running. You know, I think about all teams I've talked to this year, nobody's been going PTO this year. So why'd you go this route and explain a little bit more about it? So from the start of the season, we knew we wanted a two motor intake, but we also needed a wall stake mechanism. So we have these two motors down here and they power the intake through this gearing and it drives this axle up here. So what our PTO system can do is as this piston extends, it walks the, um, it walks these nuts into place, and so once our intake then spins, it will then drive. Oh, it will then drive all of this gearing to lift the six-bar mechanism. And for your team, when you were analyzing this year's game, what made you actually want to go this route? Was it just based on your motor distribution, or why did you actually choose it? Yeah, so we already knew we wanted like the six-motor drive for yeah. really fast, and we wanted to go the two-motor intake route since there were, you know, five mogos around, and we wanted to be able to score on those as efficiently as possible. But since we wouldn't have any loaded motors left over for the wall stakes, we decided to PTO them so we could still be able to do that. Very cool. Chase, when we were talking earlier, we talked about that a lot of what you attribute your success here is the code that's gone into your robot. You have so much experience from last year. All three of you were back. Uh, you were on Pits and Parts last year as well, too. So talk to me more about some of the uh, code that's gone into this machine. So yeah, the code is one of the most important things because really if the robot cannot function without it, so when we do our code, we make sure it's consistent every single time and it works. Like in the heat of the match, we got to make sure it works. So for our intake, when we, when we control the lift, the PTO automatically switches over without having to click any buttons at all. So for the driver, it's acting, just acts like it's a completely normal lift, like the lift is, has its own motors, even though it's being PTO'd. We also take advantage of this color sensor here. This makes sure we can either color sort rings. So what happens is it the ring co goes up through the intake and it can see that um, the ring is there. And if there's a red ring, instead of it going through the redirect, it can throw it out of the robot. To do that, it just stops at the very, very top, and that momentum carries it out. And as you just saw as well, we also use the color sensor for our redirect. To make sure that we can get wall stakes instead of it scoring on the Mogo Mech every single time, it the color sensor sees what color ring it is and makes sure that is the correct ring. And as it comes up, we use a PID to make, to make sure to know exactly where it is, because we keep track of every single hook using code. So then when it gets up here, all the code knows exactly where it is based on the color sensor and the velocity of the ring. So as it gets gets up so high, it then can reverse back down and go properly into the redirect. I appreciate the yeet machine that's going on here too with the color redirect. When you're doing, uh, for code on this, when you're doing your iterations, that sort of thing, are you just testing and making iterations or do you have any sort of extra software that's helping you out? So yeah, one thing that people always like super surprised about how simple our code is, is they're basically only using PIDs. We don't use any odometry. We just try to keep it as simple as we can because the more simple the code is, the less that can actually go wrong with that. So I mean, when we when we make iterations, we just try to see like how do, how how can we keep it simple? I guess is kind of what I'm saying. And obviously, it's working out extremely oh, well yeah, for your 100%. team so far. That's really cool. Uh, Kendall, talk to me about the uh, integration between uh, your PTO and your redirect. How all this comes together and it's just been so successful for you. Yeah, so a lot of teams have sw um, switched to the Lady Brown mechanism where like the hook goes and it grabs it directly off the top of the intake. But we we decided to stay with the redirect mechanism. One th the main thing that we like about it is that with Lady Brown mechanism, when teams are trying to score on the wall stake, they kind of can get bumped and they're kind of get easily defended. So when they're trying to put it on, it can drop it. But with the redirect mechanism, it holds on a lot more securely, so we can get bumped and it. it will keep it held on and it's just it's been 
successful for us at this event, like, so far. And I think a, a lot of reason why people switched off the redirect is because, is because of um, just not being able to get it consistently to go off, but because of how we did the chase, we keep track of the, um, the degrees off the intake motor so that we can stop it at the same exact place every time. Makes our redirect code really consistent, and it's just as consistent as any other lady bound. So, have you guys going to be in consideration to uh, maybe having your redirect and uh, your scoring mechanism hold two rings at all versus just one? We have, but we have decided it's not really um, applies it. We we might integrate it into in the future because for skills especially if we're trying to score two rings at a time and or we're just trying to fill up a wall stick as fast as possible that might be um, useful but also since our since our lift our mechanism is also use our hang we hang off of these two standoffs here and if we had if we had capacity for two rings this would have to be higher we'd actually break the plane of the gray bar on the hang structure and we'd, we'd be outside so this allows it to be under that hang bar so we can we don't have to have a whole other mechanism and add weight to our lift we can have the hang straight off the straight off the lift here and still be inside uh, still be legal and it was, um, just like makes it more simple yeah, absolutely. Let's start wrap up here. Uh, pass it back over to Ben. Uh, you got your mobile, mobile goal mech on the back end here, so I'd love to just hear more about how some of that integration works. So yeah, for our first iteration of this mobile goal clamp, we initially started with the pistons and the C channel reversed. So the C channel was more vertical with the pistons down there. So this would pull in the mo mobile goal like horizontally, but we realized that it didn't have a very wide range of motion. So we decided to switch the positions and now it clamps it vertically and so this just makes sure that it's a lot more it's a lot more effective and you know even if the mobile goes a little tipped up or something it's still going to be able to clamp on just as well another change um, we added these guides back here so initially we didn't have these and it would it would clamp it at odd positions but now as, if as we drive back into the mobile goal it'll auto align and so that just makes sure we're clamping super consistently every single time so as we're recording this, uh, like I said, we're recording this near the end of uh, day two and, and the qualification, so we don't know what the results are going to be yet, but your team has been so successful coming so far, utilizing essentially the same robot. Are there going to be any big changes for Boogie Woogie in future events, or are we still pretty happy two events all the way through? Um, I think our next signature event is going to be Kalahari, so I think that's a little distant away, so I think by then we'll have some big changes, especially you know, making things a lot more consistent and a lot more efficient. And who knows where the meta is going to go in a couple months as well, too, right? So, well, Boogie Woogie, good luck here uh, at Speedway. We can't wait to see how you do, but phenomenal team so far. Thanks again for telling us more about this awesome thing. Some great stuff teams can take and learn from it, and we wish you the best all the way here at Speedway. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.